Hello, friends. This is Mike. Today, I want to talk about finding trusted resources to help you with your spiritual awakening. If you're going through some of the things that I went through initially, and I called it my soul awakening or my soul unleashed process, uh, then you might be wondering where you find information that'll help you with it. So hang on a second. We'll talk about it. Hello again, friends and fellow truth seekers. Mike Nichols here with another episode of the Soul Unleashed podcast, where my goal is to help you with the questions you might have regarding the awakening of your soul, and particularly to help other left brain types like I think I am, ask the right questions in our search for a deeper meaning to life. Ultimately, I want to help you unleash your soul from limiting beliefs and smothering paradigms. So today's topic has to do with finding trusted resources and what I'm talking about is when I first started going through this process for me, and I've termed this uh, unleashing my soul or the soul unleashed, because I, I felt that I'd broken free from things that had really kept me constrained throughout my whole life in terms of spiritual things, the way I approach life. But I was looking for information. I was looking for help. And if you remember, some of you that have been with me for a little while, I talk about what happened initially after we lost our son in 2020. Uh, my wife and I started seeing orbs. Um, I don't know how else to describe them except they're round, light bodies that pulse, blink, move. And, you know, I'm an engineer, right? So I spent a lot, I spent a lot of time trying to make sure they weren't insects or dust, especially dust, or rain, although it couldn't have been rain because it was indoors. But, you know, I wanted to make sure that what I was seeing was something that was unusual or supernatural or paranormal. And it, when I saw the first one, the first one happened on a day, I'm not going to go through the whole story here, but the first one happened on a day when I had a very, very difficult day missing our son. It was about three months after he passed. And that night I saw my, my first orb. And as soon as I saw it, I knew that it was something unusual, and I just instinctively felt it was related to my son. But so I, I went through this whole process. You know, I tried different cameras. I, we, we saw them on our security cameras, basically. And I developed a whole list that I, I've gone through in other places about rules for orbs, <laughs> the way they act. And there's some consistencies in the way that we see them and how they show up and how they appear. But I was going through this whole process. And so I was looking for a way to validate what it was I was seeing. I was looking for trusted resources, if you would, if you will, that where I could figure out what the heck this was. And so the first thing I turned to, and I think it makes sense, is I turned to my faith. I was raised uh, strictly Catholic and went to Catholic school, at least through high school. And maintain my faith in terms of going to mass and everything. I wouldn't say I was a super duper, you know, model Catholic. I, I, I was not a member of the Knights of Columbus or I, I did not, I was actually, I was an altar boy for, for a long time, but that was when I was younger, but I was not, uh, you know, I was not really super active in the church. Anyway, I want to know what the heck these things might be. And so the first trusted resource was a friend of mine who was Catholic. And I, I approached him. I said, Hey, uh, Jim, this is what I'm seeing, and I thought he'd be like super critical or laugh or something. Like, are you nuts? You know, it can't, it can't be, it can't be what you think it is. And he said, instead, he said, "Look, if if you're seeing this and it's from God, then God wants you to see it. So it, it d doesn't necessarily have to be something that's evil or Satan or from the devil or whatever." And so I thought that was pretty cool. But he said, "Look, I, I've I've got a priest friend." that uh, you might want to contact and talk to. So the first trusted resource, if you will, that I went to was a priest. And this particular father was uh, at, worked at Catholic University in Washington, D.C. And this was during the pandemic. So you just didn't waltz in and see somebody. Uh, this is probably uh, July, maybe August of 2020. And I, I contacted him initially by email, then sent him some of the videos that I had captured and said, hey, you know, Father, I'm just trying to figure out what this is. And he said, well, why don't you come on in and we'll talk. So I met him 
in this very beautiful library uh, at the Dominican House of Studies, which is near Catholic University. And he was very nice, and we we sat down and we talked, and he had no clue <laughs> what what it was I was seeing, no idea, uh, and did not offer any kind of idea. I was hoping he'd say, you know, well, it could be spirit, it could be Jesus, it could be God, it could be, it could be angels, whatever. Instead, he said, uh, I have no idea what it is. Um, he didn't obviously he didn't want to hazard a guess even to me. And he said, but here, and he reached across the table here and he handed me this very thick book, which was the Catholic Catechism. And he said, You should probably search in here for answers. And that was it. Boom. End of uh, end of discussion. And the Catholic Catechism was something I was familiar with since I was in grade school. Uh, it's been revised a few times, but it's sometimes called the Baltimore Catechism. But it's got, you know, Questions and answers like why did God make me? God made me to love Him, serve Him, whatever. I can't remember. I can't remember it now. But I had to memorize like the first ten or fifteen questions of this book, and the book's got like five hundred questions in it about why about why God and and how things work. It's basically a dogma of the Catholic Church. So that was the first attempt. Second attempt was we knew some priests at Georgetown University, also in Washington D.C., and. Uh, two, they're, they're great. They're great guys. They were, but they were visiting uh, at a, a house that we were visiting at the shore. Uh, the shore being South Jersey on the beach, and we went for a walk on the boardwalk. And during this whole walk, my wife and I explained to these two priests, you know, what we were seeing and the orbs and how many we saw and how often we saw them and how they react to us and how they move around the room and how they sometimes go into our bodies and all this stuff. And we get back to the house. And again, I was waiting for some for the heavens to open and angels to sing and some type of spiritual guidance to uh, pour forth. And they 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 talked for a few minutes just privately, and they then they said to us, um, "You know, we don't we have no idea what this is, but we we know a, a wonderful exorcist that could come to your house and probably clear your house." <laughs> so that was uh, that was that. Um, again, you know, I, I don't blame them because. I, I talk about all of us have spiritual paradigms that we've built throughout our lives. And I assume that if you're a Jesuit priest and you spent your life in study, and I really respect what Jesuits go through to become priests, they're very learned, very smart, sometimes super smart guys. You can't even understand what they're talking about, but very smart priests. And but they 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 didn't want to hazard a guess as to what it could be or even suggest to me where I could find something else. So anyway, that was my first attempt at finding trusted resources. No good. My second attempt was ta da the internet. So I went to the internet and I thought I googled orbs. You know, where else would you start? Googled orbs, and sure enough, there are a ton of people out there that take pictures of orbs, which are cool. And some of them have amazing pictures. I came across one lady named Sherry, and she has a website called orbsareal.com. And she seemed like she really knew what she was talking about. She's written a couple of books. Great website. And so I contacted her, and to my surprise, she answered me back. And we exchanged emails, and I said, can you just take a look at some of these things that I'm seeing? Because I, I just want to know from your perspective, as someone who's obviously spent years and years and years doing this, am I seeing something that might be qualify as orbs? And she said, sure, but I need to warn you first, before you send me anything, people contact me all the time about this. And I hate to tell you this, and I don't mean to discourage you up front, but most of the times I get this stuff, it turns out that it's rain or insects or light or some type of trickery with the shadows and light. So she said, don't be disappointed if it's not what you think it is. And I said, oh, okay. Sent her the couple of video clips. And man, it wasn't, you know, but a short period of time, 30 minutes, she emailed me back. She said, this is amazing. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to explain it to you, but I'm, what I'm seeing here is definitely orbs. And it's definitely unusual and, and probably definitely spiritual. Now, Shuri, uh, the way she sees orbs is with, with photographs. So she takes. She used to take photographs with a camera before cell phones, and now she does it with cell phones, and she sees beautiful, amazing orbs. 
And she sees orbs and colors and sometimes faces and things inside the orbs. Really, you should check out her, her website if, uh, if you get a chance. Again, her website is orbsareal.com, just like it sounds and it's spelled. And she's got some great pictures up there. But again, hers are stationary and, and beautiful, and the ones I was seeing were, were moving. So Sherry was my second resource in terms of finding trusted resources. The third place that I went to look, and really this got beyond the question of orbs, but really came to navigating my, my spiritual awakening or navigating my, my soul being unleashed, is I needed to know whether or not whether what, what I was seeing was really as amazing as it seemed. To me, just seeing these things and the way they reacted and acted with me and interacted with me was proof for me that there was something else beyond this life, beyond the, what I could see with my five senses. And so I went to mediums. And so the next thing I, I tried to do, now I never considered going to a medium before, and I have other podcasts that deal with mediums, but for the purpose of this podcast, all I want to say is that I am definitely convinced that mediums, people who uh, are able to to talk to people who have passed, is what medium does, that they have made contact. In my case, and I can only speak for me, in my case, I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that the mediums that I was talking with were communicating with my son and him to me. There were things that they communicated to me from him that only he would know very personal things, and it was uh, it was amazing for me and and for my wife. Uh, she, she was in most of the, the sessions that we had, and we did it both in person and we did it uh, by phone. You can do it by FaceTime or by Zoom. It's amazing. I I never thought that was possible, but yes, it it does it does work. So that was also part of my spiritual awakening. And then the just the last resource I want to talk about. This is supposed to be a short podcast for a Tuesday, so. So initially, I went to my faith, the church, and then I went to uh, the internet, and then I went to um, the, um, the the mediums and, and, and people that I think were kind of experts in spiritual things. And then, of course, I went to books. And there was a couple of authors in particular I want to mention. One is Wayne Dyer. Uh, everybody is kind of aware of who he is. He has a doctorate, so he's often called Dr. Wayne Dyer. I, I did, of course, did not know him. He passed in... 2015. But there's one book that I read by him called Wishes Fulfilled. And that really expanded my mind about a lot of things and a a certain different way of looking at spirituality. And then the other author that I I like, and he's still alive today, is Mike Dooley. Mike Dooley has a book called Infinite Possibilities. And and there's there's another one called uh, Playing the Matrix, I think, which which is amazing. But he has... uh, He has... He talks a lot about manifestation and his concept of how reality works, basically. So Infinite Possibilities is about the nature of reality. But man, those two books, Wishes Fulfilled and Infinite Possibilities, I'll, I'll link them both in the in the show notes, were amazing in terms of helping me expand my mind. And that's, that's what made me think about unleashing, unleashing my soul, is that I start to, to see that there are other things out there if I can get beyond, you know, the the way I had constricted myself or or limited myself in terms of believing. Now, another set of trusted resources that 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 certainly people are going to consider, and and there's a conflict here is is maybe going to uh, your pastor or your priest. I already mentioned I went to priests, but they weren't my they weren't my pastor. They weren't my my personal priest. I can imagine that if, if I was having these kind of feelings and wondering about life and is there more to life and and is it really is are things like life between lives possible or soul groups possible or reincarnation or uh, what happens after we die maybe it's not exactly as as God sitting on the throne and judging us as those things start to change in my mind I sought these other resources I'm talking about but. You know, I think for some people that are perhaps, you know, they have a, a pastor or someone in their church that they would go to with these questions, it might be very, very difficult to have that conversation because other people aren't going to be at the same place you are in terms of your spiritual change. And, 
you know, I'm sure that there's going to be people who think that this is Satan talking to you or Satan leading you down a spiritual path of, uh, of towards hell or whatever. Um, uh, my thoughts about that have completely changed, and this podcast today is not about this, but but in terms of finding trusted resources, just be, I would be careful about um, seeking that kind of guidance, or you might be disappointed in that kind of guidance from someone who you know is very much still involved in the paradigm that you belong to or that you came from. But those are the trusted resources that I would just recommend off the bat here is <laughs> initially going to somebody in your faith that, that you trust and believe in, uh, again, with that understanding that, uh, that they're not going to be where you are spiritually, and neither were the priests that I talked to. Uh, I found somebody on the internet, so you might find internet resources, although, again, there's some pretty weird stuff out there, but I found what I was looking for in terms of orbs. The other thing was going to mediums. There's some expense involved in that, finding people that are... And, and uh, I'm going to do a separate thing about this in my book, especially about how to find good mediums, because there are different people out there. You kind of get what you pay for. It can go anywhere from free to uh, one, of, one of the people I think is very, very good. Her rate right now is uh, 3500 bucks an hour. So um, that's a little bit of my price range, but that, that's kind of the range that you can spend with people. And then some people have waiting lists, some mediums you can't even get to see for years. I'm on one, one medium's waiting list. She has a 10-year waiting list. When I first signed up for that, I thought, you know, I'll probably be dead in 10 years, but or she might be dead, but I'm going to sign up for it anyway. So I think I'm down, down to year eight for her. But um, And when the time comes, you know, I probably even forgot that I signed up. But, again, I'm getting off the track here, but but mediums are, are another resource. And then, um, finally, books. You know, finding the right books that you want to read. And, again, I think... Wayne Dyer and Mike Dooley are two excellent resources. And there's a ton of other ones. Uh, again, in the book I'm writing, The Soul Unleashed, I have a bibliography in there about recommended books that I found very useful. So that's all for today. I really appreciate your time and, uh, and listening to me. I'm going to sign off here just now. And uh, again, if you're able to hit the subscribe button, I really appreciate that. More importantly, if you get to leave a review for this podcast, that helps other people find me. I haven't quite figured out how all those algorithms work, but I know that the more reviews I have, the better it is for people finding this podcast. Again, I'll be back on Thursday. This Thursday, I will not have an interview, uh, but I'll start my interviews again the following Thursday. I've got some really great ones lined up, and I'm anxious to share them with you. So thanks again for listening. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.